Welcome back, everyone. This is episode two of our latest playthrough on Grand Tactician the Civil War. If you did not see the first episode, there's a link in the description. It'll take you back to the beginning. I figured out why I couldn't recruit from certain states like Ohio last time, and that's because they actually have filters over here now uh, for states as far as recruitment goes, and not everything was checked. Uh, so I had to make sure I hit all, and now all the states are showing up. Uh, including the ones that have no volunteers available. Uh, so that actually helps tremendously. We have 121,000 available volunteers in addition to all the ones I've already queued up. I have all of the patron divisions already recruited with the exception of one. I'm waiting on some Kentucky volunteers to become available for that one. And I'm in the process of recruiting all of the infantry uh, and other brigades, uh, cavalry, artillery, whatever you requested. In the meantime, I'm starting to pay a lot of attention to who the commanders are of the various units uh, because early on it's going to become really key that we have uh, decent commanders, especially for leadership and administration, uh, so that we're able to uh, get them the proper training so we can get... We didn't get very many elite units in the last campaign, even though it went into 1864. I don't want to repeat that same mistake. I want to make sure we're getting training. So starting at the top, uh, leadership, you know, there's not a lot of great uh, performances early on. They're going to have to earn those things as we go along. Uh, but as we do, we will definitely, hopefully, start to see some leveling up of some of our brigades and divisions. All right, this Confederate Army of Alabama has attacked Cincinnati. Like I said, I don't really understand why they're being so aggressive when I have the aggression set low, but we're gonna have to hit him with the Army of uh, the Ohio under McClellan. So, uh, fight for Cincinnati happening right now. So here's what we currently have available because we're still recruiting units. Uh, we do have the entire Green Berets division available to us. Uh, these are SFGA, Special Forces uh, Group Airborne, and uh, the SF Haymakers, which is their artillery unit. We have in the replacement depot the West Virginia Brigade, and I am going to use these replacement units only until all of my uh, patron units are recruited. Then I will discontinue using replacement depot units in the field. Sheridan Scrappers and Lincoln Loyalists are also available. wasn't able to get Phil Sheridan as a commander for that unit because uh, he's actually, I think, already in a division command somewhere else. Uh, but we have those two units as well. So pretty small force in the field so far but i still do have the advantage uh, pretty significantly in numbers over him uh, by about seven thousand men while i'm waiting for the entire army to get into position here i am going to go ahead and cross just so we can establish that crossing i don't want to get in a situation where i'm waiting for the whole army to line up on this side and then he shows up and opposes the crossing so once we've secured the crossing we'll go ahead and give orders for the entire army uh, to go ahead and move into a stronger position. We're going to move up toward Harlow's Rise over here. I'm guessing he's going to be dug in somewhere around this objective. We may not get into this fight on the first day. I guess we'll see because it's already afternoon. I don't want to be exhausted in attacking him. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, he did show up right after I got those two units across. So uh, this is going to be an interesting fight. The good news is that I don't need to get everybody across. And the other good news is that I already have this far bridge where I can cross everybody over. Without having to do it in the face of the enemy. Now, the SFGA, uh, third SFGA, this is their first combat. You can see they're actually kind of spread out try and get them in a better situation here. There we go. Now, they're one of the few units in my army so far that have the Springfield Rifled Muskets. Most of my army has Springfield Muskets. And we just didn't have that many of these Rifled Muskets available this early in the war. First CS Infantry in Jackson's Division of the Army of Alabama. So we'll let this play out a little while. While we get more units into the field. See how long this brigade is with 3,000 men. We, uh, since I started a new campaign, I was able to, uh, in the options, uh, raise up the number of models in battle up to the highest. So uh, we'll actually get to see a greater diversity in terms of the size of the units, depending on how many men they have. He's sending. Oh, that's his division commander, actually. 
All right, we're going to get the rest of our army across. We're going to get the uh, West Virginia Brigade under Isaac Duval into position. We'll probably have to go after these guns. I do have my 12-pounder howitzers, uh, the haymakers, firing. While we get the other units into the field, let's get these guys firing at long range. They can put some devastating fire into the flank of the 1st CS infantry. This should be an easily won battle, especially on Northern Territory. One of the other things I want to try and do in this campaign is do more of this, where we can just sit and watch the battle unfold, make it a little more enjoyable for you guys, the, the viewer, and you're watching. There come two more brigades for the Confederates coming into the fight as we move the West Virginia Brigade into position. The Haymakers are over here firing. Uh, we've got the 5th SFGA able to fire from the bank, the opposite bank. And now we're getting Sheridan Scrappers. We're going to move them into a reserve position. And the same with the Lincoln Loyalists under Jesse Reno. Actually, see if we can get them in position here. Hey, West Virginia boys, you want to turn your face in the defense? There we go. Lay it into that battery. Nice. See, now they have Springfield muskets. We've got cover in it, man. Not sure how that happened. So far, so good. We've only taken 115 casualties to 950. I'm not entirely sure how I'm inflicting such big casualties. Same thing happened in the last battle. He's pulling back. I think this one's over. Beautiful. My goodness. I don't understand why the casualties are that one-sided. There must be some reason. I took next to none. Okay, 123 casualties, 1,400 inflicted on the Army of Alabama. So that'll drive him out of Ohio. Hopefully we can stabilize this situation with these incursions into the north and turn this into a, a regular front with north and south, each holding their own territory. All right, we've moved. Sherman's Army of the Missouri up to a spot opposite St. Louis. Now, once his readiness gets all the way up to the yellow, uh, he will be able to move across into St. Louis, but right now he can't do that. So uh, we can't even build supply depots for him right now, so we're just going to have to sit tight. He doesn't even have supply at the moment. Uh, meanwhile, Grant's Army of Tennessee, which I want to move down to Cairo, which was his... Um, main base of operations, Cairo. Uh, we can't right now because he's engaged in kind of a siege uh, here across from Quincy, Illinois. Uh, we do have projects available. Let's take a look and see what we have available, if anything. Rebore muskets. Yeah, we still don't want that. Just not something I'm interested in. We already have Springfield muskets available, but I'm almost out of those. I want to get some decent weapons. I just don't know if getting rebore muskets is kind of a prerequisite for getting other weapons? I would guess it's probably not because we see other weapons available. So I'm just going to hold off for now. That Confederate Army of Alabama appears to have moved over toward Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh, so we're going to have to go pursue him again. We've got two Confederate armies in this area, the Army of Tennessee being the other one. Um, also some Confederate armies operating here in between the Department of Pennsylvania and the newly renamed Army of the Potomac, which I have to kind of park in Washington for now until we build them up a little bit and we can move across the river. Uh, overall numbers now, he still continues to climb. He's at 136,000. We're up to 110,000. Uh, still working on recruiting a number of units. Trade warfare kind of favors him at the moment, but the economy looks good for us. 
Well then, wasn't expecting this. That Army of Alabama that I just fought recently, uh, that only had about 9,000 men, I was expecting a similar number this time, but he's actually been reinforced. He's got uh, almost 23,000 men now, whereas my Army of the Ohio has not increased in terms of number of men, but we now have 48 guns that we didn't have before, so that's an advantage. Let's go ahead and fight again. So this is quite something for me personally, fighting the Battle of Portsmouth, Ohio, because my great-grandparents were married in Portsmouth. Most of my ancestors who uh, settled here in Ohio came from Kentucky by way of Portsmouth. So uh, it's kind of a, a second home for my grandfather and his family. All right, uh, we're going to have to be a little more cautious this time. We are still on the attack, but we're outnumbered. So um, Long Pass Ridge is probably what we're looking at. It's a pretty wide open battlefield, so that's good news. Uh, we'll try to find a spot to move into as it's late in the afternoon now. And then we'll kind of go from there, probably attack the next day. Okay, we're into the next day, and he is dug in right here along this spot in breastworks. So we're not going to attack him directly. And we're going to come at him from the side. Using our special forces brigades. Put our artillery in over here. One of our artillery units was moving up across here. Not knowing he'd be here and got wiped out. So not a huge deal. Um, I'm going to bring Mansfield actually in a reserve position behind these guys. We'll attack in two lines. that battery right away. I don't know why we're broken in unit cohesion, especially after after the night. So we've got to be a little careful of that. So he's going to sit out front with this artillery unit, so we've got to wipe them out pretty quickly. It shouldn't be that hard to do. get some fire on him. Hopefully he doesn't cause too many casualties in the meantime. I don't know why these guys are fragmented. But that's obviously a problem. You can see our artillery out here putting some fire in on him. He's got 15 guns there, so I'm really worried about the morale effect of 15 guns firing on that close. Have a reserve. There we go, we're driving back now. I'm just going to hold Duval right there. We've only got 1,100 men in that West Virginia Brigade. I think we can actually sit pretty tight at the moment. How did we lose sight of it? Is he pulling back? That's really strange. Yeah, let's push forward then. Oh, there they are. That was really weird. If I pull these guys over a little bit, I could actually pull Sheridan's scrappers into the fight directly. But for now, we're going to stay right where we are.
know if it's because I've got rifled muskets and he's probably dealing with some pretty primitive weapons. But the casualties are so one-sided. And that combined with the awful tactics he's used so far with this particular army. We'll see if the, the other field armies do better. Now he's going to send some cavalry out there in the rear. We're out. Get out of Ohio and you'll stop having these devastating losses like this. Okay, uh, now that we're starting to recruit units, I want to get some military academies going. Oh, we can't. We need to increase military education project levels first. Uh, so let's go to our projects and see where that's at and what we need to do to make it happen. Military education. Okay. So how much do we need? It requires a subsidy funding of 5 million, currently available 1.2 million. All right. So we're pouring a lot into military, but it's not nearly enough at the moment. I'll raise what I'm spending on the economy too. We've enacted military policy two which will certainly help things and allows us actually to invest more if we want to in military policies. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch now to Diplomacy 1. That's going to allow us to start getting some weapons import deals, which will allow us to upgrade our weapons some. That's going to be huge moving forward. We've actually got a lot of available policies uh, that we can take advantage of so there's no reason to be investing anything in extra policies right now. We'll get to that once we max out the available policies that we have. Uh, and right now we have a pretty good credit rating so I feel like we can go ahead and at least raise everything up to medium in terms of our investments at the moment. Okay, uh, some new options as far as the military goes, subsidy funding, um, recruit agents, think we need that right now, nor we de do we need recruitment offices because we've still got plenty of available recruits. Trade warfare, that might be one worth looking into, though I'm kind of waiting on military education to become something that we can invest in. Civil order I don't think is necessary right now. Nothing else on the civil side we can do. Alright, we'll go ahead and do trade warfare. Uh, blockading and blockade running efficiency are increased by 5%. All right, I'm going to move Lou Wallace with the Army of the Potomac across the river uh, into Alexandria, Virginia. And it looks like the Army of the Northwest is not particularly interested in a fight. So they're going to withdraw in the face of my force. Now, I don't think that means I should necessarily start marching on Richmond. Especially since I should probably retake the Fort Washington garrison before I do anything else. Alright, I'm sending the Ohio Squadron, which doesn't have much firepower yet because I'm still building most of it, up here to at least try to oppose this crossing. I'm trying to build a fort over here because uh, I can't just keep bouncing back and forth with the Army of the Ohio trying to uh, deal with these Confederate armies, but they just don't seem to want to leave even when I win a victory. All right, so I'm withdrawing Grant from this situation he was in so I can get him to recoup and actually fight a battle instead of just being pinned down in this siege situation. I sent the Army of the Potomac across the river to secure Fort Washington, which I can now uh, load up with a garrison. And now we'll go back and park here in Alexandria for a little while. We do have some new projects available. Let's see what it is. Uh, we still don't want rebore muskets. We're going to save up for the things that we really do want. It just takes a while to invest in those. I'm going to go ahead and build another fort on the Alexandria side of things. I think it would be a good spot to have one so we can secure the approach to Washington and heavily defend that. Washington was the most fortified city on earth uh, by the end of the American Civil War. I'm trying to get this fort built here in Portsmouth, though it looks like the Confederates have finally retreated from that area. But I want to finish that fort before I move out of this spot so we can get that complete. And then we'll send McClellan back over here to deal with 
the Army of Northern Kentucky. All right, we have completed Diplomacy 1. We'll have to see what guns that has made available for us. We can get 36-month troops, but I don't think I want to go there quite yet. Uh, I want to invest instead in industry. And as long as my credit rating remains decent, I don't think I'll go on the funding route quite yet. Okay, this is kind of important here. Because right now I mostly just have six pounders available as far as artillery goes. To get the availability of the 12 pounder Napoleon would actually be pretty big. So even though I've been saving up for some other things, that is one I can't pass up. So we're going to go ahead and invest in the 12 pounder Napoleon. And I want to see then what else we might have available to us as far as weapons go now that we've unlocked that first diplomacy. Uh, let's see if there's anything else besides Springfield muskets. Not yet. I'm hoping eventually we'll be able to uh, start purchasing, purchasing some other things, but nothing is available at the moment. Oh, here we go. Um, can we click on stuff and order it that way? I don't think we can. No. Sherman's readiness is almost at the place where we can move on St. Louis. I'm waiting for Grant's readiness to get up as well so we can cross and actually engage in combat with the Army of Tennessee uh, against the Missouri State Guard, which is, I think, the only Trans-Mississippi unit the Confederates have right now, at least the only one that I can see. As soon as this fort's done, we'll move the Army of the Ohio uh, back over. Okay, Sherman's ready. It's August, and we're gonna take St. Louis. see if the Missouri State Guard pulls back when I do that. This will also grab some supply, which will be really, really nice to have. Where are you going, Sherman? Stay right there. Also want to make sure that he's always using all the available movement options that we have. All right, taking St. Louis is going to be big. Um, numbers are getting almost even, though a lot of my men that are fielded are currently in garrisons. So as we wait for St. Louis to fall, let's check on the progress of the fort. Two days that'll be available. One day now. As soon as we get that fort available, we make a move. All right, Grant's army, big advantage in numbers. We're going to fight this one, though, just because I want to take that army out for a spin for the first time. All right, the Battle of Quincy, Illinois. He's coming in from here. I assume he's gonna come down this main road here, the most direct route to the objective, but it's certainly possible he could take this road here, come down and hit me up on this side. So uh, with that in mind, I am sending the first Victorian mounted rifles to cover that spot just in case they come from over there and we'll send one of these replacement depot units over that way as well. But I'm operating under the assumption the attack is going to come from this direction. Okay, so he's actually coming. He came down this road and then he crossed over here. And he's coming at me in this spot here. So that's going to be the Rockford Rifles. We don't have rifles yet because we don't have any available. Uh, Flemish Lions the 21st King James Regiment of Foot and Jonathan's Rifles. First Australian Volunteers in Reserve. And we can swing this flank around if he doesn't come here, but it looks like he's coming that way too. I'm going to swamp out here. So I've got cavalry out on the wing, second and third cavalry under Crook and Winfield Scott Hancock. Got the 4th Iowa Infantry here under William Rosecrans. 20th Ohio Infantry under their historic commander, Manning Force. And then the Michigan Mighty Beavers right here in the center. But the main attack seems to be coming from this way. I think his uh, artillery just realized the problem and they're going to set up. And he's actually out of range, so I actually can't hit him at the moment. My artillery needs to move up and start engaging them. Because I don't have rifles, I don't have the range. So we're going to have to move Heitzelman up with Jonathan's rifles to be able to hit these guys. Looks like they're going to pull back, though. 
All right, let's speed things up a little bit. Yule's coming at me with his cavalry right in the center. In fact, looks like cavalry's going to lead the attack on both spots. All right, Michigan Mighty Beavers and the 20th Ohio are going to open up on Yule's cavalry. right wing of the 20th Ohio. And now, because we made that move, Jonathan's Rifles is able to get in on the flank of Hill's Brigade. Michigan and Ohio fighting side by side. Fighting over Toledo this time. I'm starting to think my men are made of iron or something because they aren't taking casualties in any of these battles so far. Confederates just are not inflicting casualties on them. I've lost 100 men and inflicted 1,100 casualties. That's the third straight battle where the casualties have been something in the neighborhood of 10 to 1. I'm hoping that doesn't continue. As much as I enjoy seeing my side win, it doesn't feel realistic. I've never seen that happen on this game. And now we're taking some battles. He just hadn't really lined up in a place where he could start firing. And most of these battles have been fought in the north, which helps me a lot. Once I start marching into the south, it'll be a different story. Commander of the Michigan Mighty Beavers was wounded. That's Henry Baker. They actually took 210 casualties in that short amount of fighting. But the enemy's getting out of here. All right. 2,700 casualties inflicted on Sterling Price. Granted, these are militia, and they're not real good units for the Confederates. Once we start facing his frontline crack troops with decent weapons on southern soil, I expect a different situation. We're going to wrap it up right there. Long, long way to go in this campaign. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Once I have all of the patron units recruited, I will do a video, a private video that I'll post on Patreon. Uh, that you'll be able to see exactly where your unit is and let me know if there's any changes that need to be made. All right, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.